Hello students, at this point in the course, you should have a very good understanding of how to attack when you're castled on opposite sides, but it is time to go over how to attack when they have this point formation, when they have the fianchetto. And even if you guys know, even if you have a good foundation on how to attack, you really need to go over this lesson. Because just like I showed you last time, where we went over how to attack when they have this perfect point formation, you saw how even though we had the main ideas, and I had told you that on the lesson before, there was something new, there was a very subtle move that we learned, and it could make the difference in our games. So just like we did that last time, I'm going to show you in this lesson all of the basics, everything you need to know to attack the king when he has this pawn formation with the finchero, the bishop in front, which by the way, is the best defender for the king. Whenever you have this formation, they want to keep that bishop. But you're going to see these main ideas, and again, some things that could make a huge impact when we have these kind of attacks. Never forget, I've told you this many times, but this kind of positions, they are an aggressive attack that whoever gets to the other side first should win the game. I'm going to show you a game where they actually used these ideas and we're going to learn from it because guys, this is the best way. In this game, we start with the move e4, c5. Again, just like the game we analyzed in our last lesson, this is going to be with the Sicilian defense. I'm not going to go over the basics again because we talked about it last time, but just remember that the main line in the Sicilian defense is when the white pieces play the open Sicilian and they break on d4. So after pawn takes, Knight takes, the black pieces went knight f6, attacking, so knight c3 to defend. In that other game, guys, you saw a position something like this, where they put the pawns here, followed by bishop e7, and they castled. Well, this time, the black pieces went pawn to g6, and you can see already that formation. In a few moves, you're going to see the bishop going to g7, and the king castling. Now, these guys, I have to tell you, this is a very solid structure, very good position to have, but it's also inviting, it invites your opponent to castle to the opposite side and attack. Why? Well, in that other position where the pawns have not moved, it takes longer for us to get to it. We've talked about it. When they actually do g6, it's easier for us to make contact. It only takes two moves with this pawn to do that. Of course, it takes preparation and you're going to see what I mean. After g6, the white pieces just went uh, bishop e3, and notice how they are developing the queen side bishop first. Their intentions are to castle to d side. So instead of developing this one first, they develop the queen side bishop first. So after bishop g7, pawn to f3. And by the way, guys, let me go back a couple moves, and I don't mean to distract you, but if you remember from lesson 56, when we talked about obstruction, I showed you this position and I told you that if the black pieces go knight to g4 now, attacking the bishop, we could do an obstruction. So we could do bishop b5, and of course knight c6 is a bad move, queen d7 is a bad move. If they did knight d7 so that we cannot take with the knight, that's already an obstruction. So we could get the knight for free. And also if they had blocked with the bishop, we could take the knight for free because the bishop is pinned. And again, I didn't mean to, to distract you, I just wanted to point that out. So anyways, in this game, of course they did not do that, they just developed the bishop, and now pawn to f3. This is a thematic move. Whenever they're preparing to castle to the opposite side and attack, they're going to have this leverage pawn. I have also mentioned this before, but you know f3 is meant to help the other pawn to get to g4 and eventually help with the break on h5. So after pawn to f3, we have knight c6, Bishop c4, developing the last minor piece, castle, and at this point, guys, they went bishop b3. This is just a prophylactic move. They know this bishop is going to be attacked, so they're just taking care of that before it happens. So after bishop b3, bishop d7, and now, just like I mentioned on our first lesson on, on this topic, h4. So they're getting a head start. When I told you guys about the best opening for whites at this point in the course for you, that's when we started talking about opposite side castling. And I told you about getting a head start. So h4 is going to guarantee us that we make contact before they make contact with our side. So after pawn to h4, they went knight e5. You see, this move would be attacking the bishop if we hadn't moved it. 
So after 95, I want you guys to post a video and tell me what you do next. Pretend you're playing in a tournament game, you get to this position, what would you do? Well, if you said something like queen d2, getting ready to castle, if you said something like pawn to g4, these moves are nice candidate moves, but here they actually went with pawn to h5. And this is one of the main things that I wanted you guys to see and try to remember it, try to keep it at the back of your head. This is a very typical pawn sacrifice to open up the file. Don't forget, I told you already that if we could, we would just get rid of these pawns. We just want to open up lines to attack the king. So after h5, the black pieces took, and we're not going to sacrifice our rook. We just wanted to open up this file. Again, if we could give the pawn up for free, that would be great. So after the knight took, queen to d2, we're getting ready to castle to the other side. We already have our head start. We have everything set to attack our opponent's king. So after queen d2, rook c8, they're trying to use this semi-open file to put pressure on us. And we castle, of course. Knight c4. We cannot waste any time. He's attacking our bishop. He's attacking our queen. So we have to take that knight. And after rook takes, guys, let me just tell you the other component in this position. I mentioned before that this bishop is one of the best defenders of the king. If I'm playing with the black pieces here, I really don't want to give up my dark square bishop. He's the bishop from the fianchetto. Even if I had the opportunity to take one of my opponent's rooks, I'll really think about it before I give up this bishop. Because the moment you do that, your dark squares become weak and they're going to be used to attack. I'm telling you this because a very important part of this attack, the one that the white pieces are doing, involves removing that bishop. And that's why you saw the queen getting on d2 to help the bishop get to h6. Many times when they see the finchero, they're going to create this formation. The other game that I showed you on the other lesson, the queen actually went to e2. Here, this is the main idea. You're going to see now that after pawn to g4, see, we're kicking this knight out of the way, and then I went to f6, they continued with bishop h6. And at this point, guys, the black pieces are in a lot of trouble. If they take, and they actually did this in the game, the queen is going to retake. And now look at this, we have a battery, the queen is very well placed, breathing down the neck of the king. So this is actually a position you don't want to be in if you're the black pieces. If they don't take, then you're going to take them, followed by queen h6 anyway. So, so this is really uncomfortable to be in this position. Now, uh, at the risk of distracting here, let me, let me tell you this. Sometimes when I have the fianchetto and I know they're getting ready to remove my bishop, sometimes I do this. And I don't mean to distract you, but I'll do a move like uh, putting my rook on, on e8. So I get the rook away from here. And when they do the move, then I hide my bishop. So I refuse to give it up. He's still on the board protecting the dark squares. But for that, I need the rook to be gone because if not, they're going to take me. So this is something else to keep at the back of your head. So anyways, in this position, after bishop a6, they took, the queen takes. The black pieces did this move, guys, because they thought that this move would get them back into the game. So they're counting on the white pieces taking the sacrifice, and then they have queen a5. So they're ready putting pressure on us, they get some counterplay, and even if we attack the knight, that knight is going to still block. And even if we take, they have time, guys, to get us in trouble. So they could take on c3, and we could say that they have a nice counterplay, it's going to be uncomfortable for us to continue. But in this game, after the queen took on h6, they sacrificed on c3. The white pieces didn't even pay attention to this. We don't want to waste time we don't need the rook, we just need to attack this king. So after rook c3, we forget about everything and we focus on this potential checkmate on h7. So we have the battery, we're ready to do it. What move do you think we should do? Pause the video if you need a few minutes and tell me what you'd do if you were playing this game. Of course, guys, we have to attack that knight. So we went pawn to g5. If the knight just goes, let's say, e8, we're going to do checkmate. But in this game, they went knight h5. At this point, I'm going to challenge you again, guys, to pause the video and see if you can come up with the right continuation. So it's a white piece to move. Our queen is unable to do anything without help. So the right move is to just break through and expose that king completely. So after we took the knight, we're ready to do checkmate. 
only move to prevent it is to take the rook. But now our other rook is coming in to help. So after rook h1, they have to protect h7. And there's only one way, guys. They need the bishop to come and help. So they went queen c8, rook takes on h5. We're ready to do checkmate. Bishop f5. If they try to do something like moving the rook away, well, that's not going to save them. Check, followed by checkmate. So after bishop um, f5, we just went pawn takes. They took on c2, trying to deflect the defender of the pawn. And after queen f5, we still have a very powerful attack, but there's one move that we need to find to make our opponents resign. So pause the video again, guys. It's the white pieces to move, and there's a very powerful move that after the white pieces did it, the black pieces just resign. So take your time and see if you can figure it out. Well, the move here is actually pawn to g6. Now, I'm not going to do it on the board. Let's try to visualize it. Let's try to do it in our head. So if the pawn goes to g6, not only am I doing a discovered on the queen, I'm also blocking the queen from protecting h7. So now I'm ready to take on h7 with checkmate. If after g6, the pawn takes, I'm not even going to take the queen. I'm just going to do checkmate. If they took with the f-pawn, then it's going to be the same thing, checkmate. If instead after g6, they take with the queen, well, we have rook g5 and we're pinning that queen, right? So g6, the black piece is resigned because we're going to do check mate if they take we pin the queen and guys that's it once we take that queen is queen and knight versus rook so of course they have to resign all right guys so here we go we already know how to attack the king when they have this pawn formation we know how to attack it when they have this pawn formation our next lesson is going to be on how to attack the king when they have this pawn formation it's going to be very easy we're going to go over it and then after that you're going to see me just playing games using these ideas. That way we put everything together, but trust me, after these few lessons, you cannot tell me that you don't know how to attack when you cast on the opposite sides. Of course, there's a lot more that we have to learn and we're going to be reinforcing it here and there, little by little. But now it's time for you to continue to practice and I will see you guys next time.